Indigenous artists are plowing new ground in essence when they use uh, traditional iconography but in the medium of glass. There's so many things to love about glass. The color, of course, is maybe the most important aspect from an artistic perspective. I also like the fragility of glass, and it's both durable and fragile at the same time. Glass can last for hundreds of years, but it can also break in an instant. What do you see that just jumps out at you and captures your attention? The shapes and um, the ways that different artists uh, are able to put color and shape together. Uh, for instance, uh, Dan Friday takes glass rods in all different colors and he puts them together and then melts them in the furnace then puts it on the end of the pipe and when he blows it, he can get a crisscross pattern like a basket oh, wow. uh, by the way that he bundles these glass rods together and then he can blow a vessel. And how did that movement begin? Well, it all started when, uh, for in native country when Lloyd Kivanu, who was then the president of the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, was working with the Rhode Island School of Design to create a college accredited curriculum. Uh, and in 1974, Dale Chihuly, who was teaching at the Rhode Island School of Design, came to Santa Fe, taught for a semester at IAIA, and built a glass hot shop. And that was the introduction of glass art to Indian country. What does this do to your understanding of Native art? Native art at the uh, time of the first colonization of this country, people were very interested in Native arts, but it came to be that the colonizers wanted Native artists to do exactly what they had been doing at the time of colonization. They, they in essence, said it wasn't real Native art if it didn't look exactly like it had, had looked in the 1500s or 1600s or 1700s. And so Native artists felt constrained. Mm. And so Lloyd Kivanu and a group of other artists um, began encouraging Native artists to first be artists and also work through their Native traditions. And with the beginning of the studio art movement, which interestingly started in the 60s at the same time as the Institute of American Indian Arts, uh, glass making became an artistic endeavor. And so Dale Chihuly was a part of that, uh, the very beginnings of the studio glass movement. And when he came to IAIA, it was really two movements coming together, the studio glass movement and the contemporary native arts movement. Who are some of the first artists to the native glass movement? There's a scorpion that was made by Larry Avacana, and that's the very first animal that we know of that was made in glass by a native artist. And he made it in, uh, I think, 1975. Animals are very important in native communities. Preston Singletary is very well known and has been one of the leaders in the native glass arts movement, as has Tony Hahola, who began studying glass art in 1975, shortly after Dale built the hot shop at IAIA. Robert Marcus, who everybody calls Spooner, he lives in the Southwest. He's from Okeawinge, Pueblo and his work is really amazing for its color. Bright, brilliant blues, reds, and he both blows the works himself and does the carving. 
what does this movement say about indigenous imaginations? The medium of glass um, has many uh, uh, features that uh, let artists be very creative as they still work in traditions uh, from the past. The piece by Tammy Garcia is a wonderful piece that is a version of the Santa Clara Black Pottery. She created this in collaboration with Preston Singletary, a Clinket artist from the Seattle area. And Preston blew the vessel and Tammy carved the vessel using the Santa Clara motifs. And the, um, it's very interesting that the Pueblo artists of the Southwest, if they make a vessel, they tend to make a pot, a piece of pottery in glass. Whereas the Northwest Coast artists, where their vessels were traditionally made of either wood or grasses, tend to make baskets or boxes depending on what the traditional vessels were in their tribes. There are some beautiful blown pieces, some beautiful cast glass pieces, and also fused pieces where glass, uh, maybe glass of different colors are put together. And there's also an artist, uh, her name's Angela Babby, who has developed a process where she takes powdered glass, liquefies it, and paints with it as if she's painting with oil. And the stunning pieces are, are just amazing. Indigenous artists are very creative and operate out of both their experience and their imagination. What is so wonderful about that to you? It is both a testament to the endurance and the dynamic societies that are still operating today in Indian country, um, that the importance of tradition and the ancestors uh, shines through in contemporary art.